Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah I'd like to offer this simple piece of advice for our new Muslim brothers and sisters and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and welcome to Islam and we welcome you as our brothers and sisters because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran innamal mu'minun ikhwa Verily the believers are brothers So we are your brothers and sisters in faith And that brotherhood and sisterhood It is bigger than our racial divides And our racial relations Meaning I'm a black man from America This is bigger I'm from America, my nationality this is bigger. You may be from Pakistan. This is a bigger. And so on and so forth. So it's very important to realize and actualize that brotherhood. And so I wanted to give just a few little simple pieces of advice. Having gone through the experience of having embraced Islam by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I wanted to share a few small pieces of advice. The first thing I would say as far as being a Muslim is being consistent. And consistent in your growth and not and avoiding ex uh, extremism. And what I mean by that, that extremism can come in many a variety of forms that being extreme can be extreme in worship and it can be extreme in your creed in your belief the extreme an example of extreme uh of being extreme in one's creed would be like those groups such as uh isis or isil or daesh or whatever you want to call them these groups that they predicate their religion upon bloodshed spilling blood of others and decreeing other Muslims to not be Muslims. This is their foundation. This is what they build their foundation. Then you have others that crave leadership, that they, the essence of their faith or the foundation that their faith stands upon is that they want to build Islamic leadership, that that is their sole goal. It doesn't matter how your worship is, your relationship with your Lord, whatever their thing, their uh, methodology is based upon taking leadership. Again, these are extreme views, especially when that is your sole focus. But rather your focus should be accordance with what the Quran emphasizes. And Allah tells us what the purpose of our creation is. It isn't to be the, the president or the king or the leader, but our purpose in order to actualize those other things in the dunya, in this worldly life, is to worship Allah, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's, I'm sure, why you embraced Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So what we understand from this Quranic verse is that our purpose in life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the various ways that we can worship Him. And the only way that we can have our worship accepted is that it's in accordance with the sunnah or the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not based upon our desires. So that means we pray like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We supplicate like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the way that he did, and we do Hajj, the pilgrimage, like the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, and all of the acts of ibadah and all of the acts of understanding Islam and the emphasis that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam put on manners that we try to actualize it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in an authentic hadith he said ma min shay'in athqalu fi mizan mu'min yawm al-qiyamah min husn al-khulq wa inna Allah yubghidu al-fahish al-badi there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer 
than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So good manners, that's inclusive. Husnul khulq. That's inclusive of being good to your parents, being good to your relatives, being good to your neighbors, being good to the believers, being good to the non-Muslim, sharing Islam with the people, doing deeds of righteousness. And Allah says in the Quran, as far as being obedient and having good ties with your parents, he coupled that relationship that you have with your parents along, he mentioned it along with Tawheed, with, along with worshiping him and him alone, showing us what? That that's an imperative that we are good, we have good family ties and we're good with our parents, especially. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem, وَقَضَى رَبُّكُمْ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا يَاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord has commanded you to worship him and him alone. And to your parents, be uh, obedient or be righteous and have good manners. So this is one of the things I want to advise with, is that you are consistent in your worship and that you allow yourself to grow in Islam. That's another thing. And that will protect you from extremism. That you understand that you're going to grow in your faith. You're going to gain more knowledge. And so that brings up the second piece of advice I want to uh, advise myself and you with, and that is to seek knowledge, Islamic knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, He said that seeking Islamic knowledge is an obligation upon every believing male and female. So if you want to come closer to Allah, you can only do that with Islamic knowledge. You can only do it on knowledge. Let's give an example in this worldly life. If you want to be a doctor, can you just get get your start your practice? No. You have to go to school, medical school, which is probably a minimum of probably eight years or something like this. And you need to pass the board uh, to be a doctor. You need to do all of these things and to become licensed. It's very rigid and long and length, lengthy process. So what about being a believer? What about knowing and understanding your religion? Of course, that is a long and a lifetime process of learning and being patient and being consistent in your worship and being consistent in seeking Islamic knowledge. So read and learn and learn from those people who can teach you the beliefs of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So seeking knowledge is imperative and it's an obligation to the extent that you're able to for every Muslim. And that's going to give you knowledge. It's going to give you understanding. It's going to give you clarity. It's going to give you more comfort with regards to your faith. Another important piece of advice I want to mention is being patient. That all of that requires patience. It requires patience and embracing your new faith. Maybe you're going to have challenges from family. Maybe you're going to have challenge for other people, challenges in your society. And patience on seeking knowledge. That requires patience. It's not an easy path. And patience in doing acts of worship to Allah. That takes patience. It's not easy all the time to get up to pray five times a day, to wash yourself for prayer, to do those things and to learn that's not always easy so it takes a type of patience but the reward is immense and the law mentions which in this verse and it's a verse uh, in the last uh, Jews of Quran the last section of the Quran and a verse entitled uh, Al Asr, or I mean, uh, a, a, a Quranic verse entitled uh, Al or Surah, uh, which is Al Asr, and Al Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, after Audhu Billahi min Shaitan al Rajim, Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim, Wal Asr, Inna al Insan la fi Khusr, Illa al Ladina Amanu, Wa Amilu Salihati, Wa Tawassu Bil Haqi, Wa Tawassu Bil Sabr. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Kitab al Kareem, He swears by the time, Wal Asr. All of mankind is in a loss. So the fact that you've embraced Islam has a na'mah That's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he took you from the darkness to the light. So Allah says, All of mankind is in a loss. 
<laughs> then he makes an exception, except for those who believe. So there's where your iman comes in, your faith, and that only comes with knowledge. <laughs> and those who do righteous actions. So that means you have to gain knowledge and practice, do those righteous, you know, believe, and do those righteous actions. Learn the 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 learn how to pray, learn how to make tahara, learn about tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islamic monotheism, learn uh, ab about all, all the aspects of the religion that is going to help you come closer to your Lord, because that's what it's all about. It's about how to get to paradise. And they are, they exhort to, uh, they call to the truth, and they are patient, they call to patience. So that lets us know that patience is so important. That's what you're going to grow in faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the law masabri. Verily, Allah is with those who are patient. So be patient on your new journey, your spiritual journey in life. Spiritually grow. Look to that which is going to cleanse your heart and bring you closer to your Lord. Submit to your Lord. You don't have to submit to mankind anymore. But strive to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that only comes through Islamic knowledge and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the last piece of advice I want to offer is the importance of prayer. And I can speak personally that if it wasn't for salat, even when I used to make many mistakes, and I've mentioned this before, that when I was a new Muslim, I didn't know. We didn't have really people teaching us. And I used to even make prayer in a clean bathroom. Because I didn't know. So I used to go at my work when I was a new Muslim. And I didn't know until, and then I let my boss know. And she was a Jewish woman and she let me pray in her office. And I used to pray in her office. And what kept me Muslim was continuing with that prayer. Bin Fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I never let it go. Even if my iman got low. Even if I did this and did that. Or something distracted me here and distracted me there. I kept the prayer, and I think that's honestly what Allah favored me with as a source of guidance. And I see that many of the people that I've witnessed that unfortunately have left Islam or went totally astray, often it was it began with the prayer, weakness in their prayer. So learn your prayer and adhere to it wholeheartedly. And know that you're going to grow spiritually. Sometimes you're going to be up, sometimes you're going to be down in your iman, your faith. Because your faith fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And that's all of us. But you don't want it to go so low that you leave Islam. Instead, you want to hold on to the book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Hold on to your prayer. Hold on to your beliefs. And go forward and practice Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And let this be a source of goodness, not a source of, of distraction and evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.